What's going on guys? Dorko back again, hope you're fantastic today and welcome to the interview with Scott Corfin. I am a so, so excited and nervous at the same time. Um, I'm so freaking nervous for this, um, but it's going to be great. I've got a bunch of questions to ask him uh, from all of the games, so from F1 through till Ultimate Custom Night and the future as well. So we're going to ask him some future updates, what he's planning and um, stuff about himself as well. So it's going to be a great interview. Please understand as well that, that I've got a lot of questions, but I couldn't ask everybody's, of course. I got like literally 10,000 questions from you guys so I had to pick each ones and I gave Scott the questions and we've reviewed them together for the ones he wants to answer okay so yeah that's all I need to say thank you so much for the support and again thank you Scott for the opportunity to give you an interview I am incredibly nervous this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm incredibly grateful for you guys and Scott as well and this franchise Happy anniversary to FNAF. Four years today. It's insane. Let's go. Hello? Uh, hello. Hello, hello. Um, if you're hearing this, that means that you beat 50-20 mode, and I have to do an interview now, which I'm kind of uncomfortable with, but I'm going to do it. Ah, forget it. Okay, I'm done with the phone guy stick, so... <laughs> I was going to try and keep it going for a while, but no, I think I'll just end it right there. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. How are you doing today, Lewis? <laughs> I am very scared and nervous because, you know. No, no, that's, that, that's, that's crazy talk. Yeah, I'm, I, I've, I've been a little anxious about this, too, because, uh, you know, I, I tend to ramble on with my answers sometimes, but I haven't, I haven't prepared any answers for this. I'm just going to try to uh, sp speak from the heart and just... Uh, Talk about some stuff and yeah it'll be good yeah awesome because today um is the four year anniversary of five nights at freddy's so four years it's crazy yeah four years and we'll just get straight into it so the first game so four years since five nights at freddy's one we're gonna go straight into that um so the first question i'd love to ask you kick it off with how did you think of the original designs of the animatronics? So the original gang. Um, you know the the, the main three characters, uh, Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica. Those designs just kind of, uh, I didn't really, I didn't really plan ahead like what animals they should be. Those three just kind of seemed natural to me for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know, the only one I really struggled with was trying to think of the fourth character. You know, who would be on the separate little stage kind of by himself. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember all the all the options that I'd come that I uh, originally was kind of debating between. I mean, one of them, one of the contenders was a fox, obviously, which ended up winning. Uh, the other one was a wolf. Um, uh -huh. Another one was going to be a beaver. <laughs> but then later, I decided against that because I because I thought that was too on the nose from Chipper, so I decided against that. But but yeah, actually, if if I remember correctly, I really think that a, a, a beaver character was the front runner until I finally decided against him because of Chipper and then went with uh, Fox instead. Yeah. So Freddy was always going to be the original like leader instead of um, Chipper. Yeah, yeah. Freddy was always the Freddy was always going to be the main character. He was the first character that I made. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just came naturally. I didn't didn't have to plan him out. I, was, I just knew that he was going to be a bear with a, a top hat holding a microphone. Yeah. You know, he, he, he was always he was always going to be the the leader of the the leader of the pack. Um, the next question is, how did you come up with the game mechanic? So sitting alone in an office, not being able to move. Um, I think someone mentioned about sit and survive. Did that have in, any inspiration for that? Any like old games inspire you for this one? Um, uh, well, I don't think it was sit and survive. I don't, uh, <laughs> uh, sit and survive was just kind of, a, you know, uh, you know, all, all of these games. <clears throat> well, th then again, I, I guess uh, I guess it was my mindset at the time because my mindset at the time was uh, to make uh, smaller smaller games, mm -hmm. and that would be kind of a, a shorter experience. Because for a while, I was trying to make these, you know, big kind of sweeping epic games like the Desolate Hope and stuff, and yeah. you know, it was just too too much of a gigantic commitment that ultimately you know that they, they just weren't paying off and at the time i was really struggling you know to find you know something to kind of you know support my family and everything mm -hmm. and uh, five nights at freddy's 
was kind of the result of me switching to this idea of making these shorter experiences that I can make a, a bit faster, you know, without committing, you know, two years to them, you know, while also, um, you, you know, just m making it a really robust experience. It's just a shorter game, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I think that that played a big part in it. You know, everything everything is designed to where you see everything right away. You mm -hmm. know, as soon as you jump in, you're in the experience. Yeah. You know, and so it doesn't matter if it lasts for five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, an hour. You know, you're in the middle of it right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And um, did anything change along the course of making uh, FNAF One? Um, I, I don't. I don't think I had. I don't think I had any problems. Uh, lots of the stuff that was in there, I don't know, Five Nights at Freddy's 1, I, I think just was a result of just all, all the right ingredients yeah. to be there. You know, I I threw a bunch of stuff in there and then, you know, people would kind of, the people who test it would kind of give me, and I'm not, not, I'm not my kids, I let some other people test mm -hmm. it as well, but you know, they would give me some advice, like one person said, oh, I think you should leave out phone guy, I think that's too much exposition. And then, uh, you know, my mother jumped in and said, oh, I don't think you should have backstory about anybody getting yeah. killed. You know, I don't think the game needs that. You know, and then I think I've made a lot of good decisions about yes. what to leave yeah. in, <laughs> you know, and, and what to take out. And it just, it, it was just all, all the right ingredients. All the right in ingredients were there, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with yeah, how it turned it, out. It really stood out from all of the indie games everybody was playing at that time. And um, that's definitely how it like became successful. It just stood out from any other horror experience as well. Um, so yeah, good job. You know, it, really good job. Um, speaking about that, about Thanks. it um, exploding, did you think it was going to, you know, get a huge reaction on the internet? No, of course not. I mean. But like I said, at the time, you know, uh, I was, I was, I was just trying to, you know, make a bunch of little games to kind of, you know, help, help support my family. And at the time, yeah. I think I was making, you know, slot machine games and just, you know, anything would bring in an extra, you know, 40 or $50 a month, you know, and mm -hmm. just trying to accumulate all that stuff up. So no, I, when, you know, whenever I, and I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, that wasn't just an afterthought of a game. I mean, I put a lot of, you know, time and effort into Five Nights at Freddy's, obviously, but as far as, you know, expecting it to explode, no, of course not. You know, I remember whenever I released it, you know, I didn't get it on Steam or anything. It was a website called Desera at the time, mm -hmm. which was just more immediately welcoming of, you know, anybody who wanted to post games. I think there, there are other sites that do that now, but, you know, I was watching the download count on that, and I was watching it just kind of skyrocket, and, yeah. um, you know, I'd... I'd and eventually my wife would come over and she'd be like, L let me look at the number, let me look at the number. She'd come over every 10 minutes wanting to see because oh. she was just astonished at, at how quickly that number was just going from, you know, 5,000 downloads, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. It was just yeah. going through the roof just by the minute, you know. And, and, and it really at the time, I was just kind of enjoying it that evening. I was like, well, you know, this, this, is, this is great, you know, this, you know, but it'll be over tomorrow. Mm. You know, and that was really my mindset. It's like, oh wow, this is you know, this is a big, a big spike. Everybody's really enjoying it. I wonder what I'm going to make tomorrow. Yeah, you know, I had no idea that four years later I was still going to be in the middle of a bunch of, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's projects. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Um, do you, you have a favorite memory of Five Nights at Freddy's one? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, and it it's the first. Uh, first jump scare for me and the first jump scare for my two kids, you know, and and it was all Bonnie Which thrills me because Bonnie <laughs> is kind of the, 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 the only one that I think is a scary Design for me like I've, I've never had a nightmare about any of my own characters except for Bonnie <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but yeah, I remember when I was when I was developing the game at the time Bonnie was just a, a, a still image and not an animated jump scare that I just had an image of Bonnie up in your face for whenever you know it, you know, he had reached you, yeah, and 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 that and, and that startled me. You know, I was flipping through the panels and stuff, and I was and I was intentionally hope I was testing out the AI. Yeah, you know, I think I even had a little map showing me that there was a little red dot moving through the building. Mm -hmm. But even though I was expecting it, I put down the monitor and there was Bonnie looking at me, and it oh, it, it was it was upsetting. You know, it was startling. Yeah, you know, and and now you know now that doesn't really startle anybody anymore. But at the time. Yeah. I don't know, it got me. And, then, and so then I was letting, after I'd animated, I was letting 
my two sons uh, play it, and I was getting to you know watch the you know I, I had I had a good seat behind both of them, so I was able to get a good view of them playing and what they were playing and everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew what was coming, and they had no idea. <laughs> and uh, and you know and, and the younger of the two, he got jump scared by Bonnie, and he just launched backward in his chair. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good good times good times tormenting the children <laughs> I mean you still do you you made them test um, ultimate custom night as well <laughs> four well, years on no I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you I'll tell you what you know my, my, my two sons Ian and Brayden they're they've been great they've been they've been great supporters you know all these years I couldn't have done any of this without those two you know they've been just faithful beta testers for me you know, and whenever they were really little, you know, I'd, I'd pay them through ice cream and stuff Aww. like that. But yeah, I made a bit—I made a big mistake this last time with Brayden. You know, I, I, you know, obviously I don't make them do this, so you know, I tried to incentivize them. <laughs> and uh, Brayden and and you know, Brayden's gotten wise to it. He's like, well, you know, what? Well, how about if I go through and beat all these challenges? You know, and I so I just thought, well, you know, I, I don't know. I'll give you, you know, I'll, I'll give you twenty bucks for each of the challenges you beat, thinking he was going to beat one or two. I was like, yeah, he'll he'll spend thirty minutes <laughs> on this. You know, so I'll, I'll commit twenty you know 20 40 60 dollars whatever he sat there and he did like a 12 hour marathon on that game he was playing it nonstop. he was raging <laughs> so hard in there and he completed every single one of those challenges yes. except for like the last one i think yeah and that that boy made bank that day he walked away <laughs> with about 300 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh worth it <laughs> yeah yeah man but 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 it was it was totally worth it because he found he found bugs and glitches yeah, yeah. that would have been that would have been really bad. I mean that and that's the whole point anyway. You know he found these things that I need that I needed to fix before yeah. before I released the game. So okay, here's an interesting question about FNAF One. Um, was there any reason why the kitchen camera was disabled, like due to gameplay limits on Click Team or anything like that? Uh, I, I, no, no. I, I just thought it would be interesting. Uh, I mean, you know, that, that mechanic ended up not really playing a big role in anything. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, I think originally, you know, I had wanted, you know, and, and I, I, I did got better with this in later games, how to how to make audio play a bigger role in it. You know, I got better yeah. at that. But in the first one, that was just my attempt to make audio play a bigger part in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of ended up just being just something different and not really being a major mechanic or anything yeah um, i mean i think it was a good mechanic to uh, know that freddie was in the kitchen as well because when freddie's in the kitchen he plays his uh music right um that's right that's that's right that's right so it, it, it do, i think it does play a you know a, a mechanic because you know that freddie's in there and usually when freddie's roaming around you see his eyes but you just see nothing right. inside there, so... So, when you were making Five Nights at Freddy's 1, were you already planning on making a sequel? Or any other ideas what were flinging in your head on what to do? Um, I, I definitely left a lot of things open-ended, you know, in, mm-hmm. in case I wanted to expand upon them later. I mean, obviously, like, I, you know, I, I didn't, I did not have the entire story planned out as i know there's much debate about that on the subreddit it's like oh you know <laughs> some kind of mad genius that had you know seven games planned out from the beginning no i didn't uh how <laughs> <laughs> uh but you know but i definitely knew that the story i was telling in the first game was a was a was a small snippet yeah. of a larger story even if i didn't have all the details of that story fleshed out yet you know, I, I knew that the story being told in that game was a smaller part of a whole. And if you could go back in time, is there anything you would add, change or add to Five Nights at Freddy's One? No, not not the first one. Yeah. Um, I can go back and think about all the other games and be like, eh, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. But yeah. no, the first game was just kind of a perfect storm of ingredients. It was, you know, it was just the right time. You know, mm-hmm. when you know uh, everybody was really into indie horror games. Yeah. And I think it was the right look, and it was the right feel, because yes. it was something, you know, different than what everybody else was playing. And it was, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a type of horror game, or at least um, the an- the antagonists were something that hadn't really been explored in horror games, I didn't feel. Yeah. You know, the idea of animatronic creatures. So, 
and you know and everybody really likes foam guy obviously everybody liked the little easter eggs thrown in and, and the backstory no it was just a, a good a good mix of ingredients and it was kind of lightning in a bottle and i don't think i was ever able to fully capture that again and i don't think i really will be able to and and, and that's mm-hmm. okay i mean like i said that was kind of a it was kind of lightning in a bottle right we'll go on to five nights of freddy's 2 next um november uh 2014 if you didn't make this game i wouldn't be here now basically honestly it's the truth um so fnaf 2 is the game that really means a lot to me and i'll be forever grateful for it so yeah thank you <laughs> just wanted to quickly plug that in <laughs> good uh, good i appreciate it about five nights at freddy's 2 how did you get the idea for you know changing the mechanics up a little bit so the masks and the vents you know watching the puppet you know there wasn't a really in-depth planning phase mm-hmm. for, for like the overall feel of the games like a lot of these were i just kind of knew what they were supposed to be or just kind of just kind of felt the way that the series should progress like i knew that part two should be chaotic you know part yeah. two should be you know a lot more chaotic than the first one it should be just crazy it should it should be overwhelming panic mm-hmm. and then i also knew even at that time before as i was working on part two i knew that three should be a very personal experience it should be the opposite of what two was you know part three should be kind of one-on-one and i knew that part four should be um kind of kind of uh, unique yeah. as far as setting and things like that and i knew that part five should be kind of high tech and I even kind of already had color schemes picked out like I knew that part five should kind of be purples and blues yeah um I knew that three should be kind of green and I knew that two should be kind of uh two should be feel kind of industrial which I think that it does yeah um but but outside of that uh outside of that I'm 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 not really sure and maybe there was more to it at the time but you yeah. know yeah, it all happened fine. so fast you know yeah 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 um did you have any scrapped content or anything for the game and um, because some people um men- mentioned the um tox to- toxicity is that, is that toxicity <laughs> meter right the, right the yeah the yeah the toxic meter I, yeah. I i think if i remember correctly i think that the toxic meter was a, was an early idea on um just something so that players couldn't put the mask on and leave it on forever yes leave it on forever um, you know yeah. I, I had the idea that if you put the mask on this meter starts running out yeah but i don't know that that seemed that didn't really seem to to, to fit mm-hmm. i don't know it just didn't seem to it just didn't make quite as so much sense and so then I, I the way that i solved it was you know obviously having the need to go and wind the music box every once in a while and yes. the fact that you know foxy was immune to the mask you know so i came up with other ways that felt that yeah. felt a little more natural than just putting on the mask and seeing a meter deplete. Like, oh, okay, I can only wear this for five seconds. It seemed a little too artificial. And it, it works perfectly anyway, so I don't think it was needed anyway because of what you just said, uh, the things that you've added. You're not going to always keep the mask on forever anyway. So, yeah. Was there a reason why you decided to remove Toy Chica's beak after she left the stage to make, probably to make her more creepy, right? Uh, you know, once again, I'm not entirely sure what my mindset was on mm-hmm. that. I think it was just kind of a way to distinguish her stay, you know, like stage presence, Chica, from yeah. now I'm a monster coming to get you. You know, like yeah, yeah, if she's yeah. entered attack mode or something. You know, uh, well, once again, um, actually, I think maybe part of it is because, like, you know, a classic Chica, even on stage, was still kind of creepy looking, but the toy versions just in their in their standing state on stage weren't quite as creepy i mean to- yeah. i think toy bonnie still retains some of that but like toy chica isn't really uh, scary looking toy chica by herself isn't very scary i yeah. didn't think and um yeah so removing the beak was just one thing to just kind of push it into you know yeah. making her look a little more uncomfortable um so um how did you come up with the mini games because this was the first game to ever have uh mini games was this to you know um show the law not on paper if that makes sense so you know instead of just giving like this and this and this oh blah 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 and um, the killer killed five kids yada 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 but in- instead you didn't show it on paper you put in into a mini game right um I-, I think it was because i don't know i, I want to keep the gameplay experience similar 
And but I also wanted to make the game a little bit more fleshed out than the first one, and so yeah. that just seemed like a kind of a natural way to do that, where you know while not interfering with the gameplay, mm-hmm. you know, putting it in in kind of an unexpected way that yeah. that, would, that would make it interesting, but while also not making the player feel like they're forced to sit through cutscenes and things like that. Um, do you have any good memories of FNAF 2 at all? Or bad. <laughs> um, th- th- that was that was a really stressful time for me. I think because yeah, obviously you know my life was changing a lot at that point. You know and there was just a lot of th- there was a big frenzy going on with just all aspects mm-hmm. of my life, and I was really trying to to work on that. But I mean, it, it, I mean, it, they're they're still they're still good memories. Yeah. But I just wouldn't want to revisit that. You know, it was just it was really chaotic, and mm-hmm. I was really stressed out. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, all, all, all good memories, but I wouldn't want to revisit it. Okay, we'll move on to Five Nights at Freddy's Three then. So this one, this is the, this is when I emailed you uh, for early access. I only had, li- I literally had only like, uh, I think it was like six, six K subs or something like that. And I, I've still got the email. I was like, hey Scott. Uh, uh, my name's Dorka, I make FNAF videos, um, is there any chance I could get it early when it comes out? And you said, yeah, you're probably on your list, which is insane. And that, <laughs> and that, like, honestly... I, I've still, I've still got that list, I've still got that list on my desktop, the same one from, from all those years ago. And, my, and it's literally called, and it's literally called my, uh, the VIP list. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, you said that. In the email, you said, I'll put you on the VIP list. And I was, <laughs> I went, I was so happy. I was screaming when you replied. Oh, such a good memory. I mean, and I, I don't, I don't use that list very often anymore but I still keep it you know because you never know you never know what's going to come up you know for future events I always keep that VIP list that's awesome am I still on it <laughs> yeah oh yeah of course you're still on it yeah everybody's okay. I, I never take anybody off the VIP list okay so I can do I can be bad and then you'll never take me off right well Ever. I mean don't test it but... <laughs> I was kind of testing it with Ultimate Custom Night with this uh, 5020 mode uh, fiasco. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's 3, another good memory for me. Uh, February. I, after this game came out, I, I, was, I was in university studying law at the time. And I quit to carry on with this game franchise for my channel. Um, so yeah, another good memory um, with FNAF 3. First off... How did you think of Springtrap? I don't know. Um, <laughs> w- 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 once again, w- once again, he was just—he was just the character for that game. I, I, yeah. I did not—I did not sketch out a whole bunch of characters and write pros and cons lists. You know, he was—he was just the natural—he was just the natural villain for that. You know, I, yeah. I knew what the villain was supposed to be, and I just kind of started modeling him, and um, he just kind of came together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this model was like um, a big difference compared to the other ones that you did because you had to go through all the details of the, you know, it, it being withered and having like body parts and gore and stuff like that. Yeah, so he he did take longer to model and, you know, his his purple corpse is in that whole body that whole time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even though for the majority of the game you never see it, you know, yeah. that purple guy, he's, he's in there. Yeah, and... Well, we got those secret um, um, images. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You get to see them a little bit. Yeah, and the, the troll was this the first time you did the troll game as well? Was this the first? This was you, this was when you uh-huh. first. Yep, it sure was. The launch yep. of yeah, the troll the first, games. Um, yeah, that was the first troll game. And it was. Um, sure was. Oh, we we were. It was like a platformer from one of your old games, right? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Old game. Uh, there is no pause button. I stuck yes, Freddy's head. Yes, that's it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that was the first time we saw um, Springtrap as well because you put Spr- Springtrap in the menu and there were some frames where he did have That's his right. like um, his mask and stuff going crazy like coming on and off um, but That's right uh, I, I remember the first <laughs> teaser you did with I, I, um, he always comes back and stuff and people originally thought that it was like um, Fredbear didn't they? Instead of uh, being well, a... Yeah, they, they thought it was Golden Freddy, yeah. Yeah, instead of it being like a, 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 a rabbit character. 
So I remember those times, man. I was one of them, by the way. I originally thought it was uh, Golden Freddy. <laughs> this game um, was when things went a little bit crazy with like the mini games and stuff and the good ending and the bad ending. Um, if you can answer this, which ending really happened? I've given a lot of thought mm -hmm. as to whether or not I should answer this question. Okay. And I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And the answer is very interesting. Okay. You know, the answer is very interesting. The answer is complex. Okay. However, I'm not going to answer it because <laughs> because it's only going to cause strife. I mean, you 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 see the kind of trouble that that you that erupts especially several yeah. years ago the flame wars that would go on over mangles gender something as simple as that you know <laughs> yeah 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 you know, i mean i mean you know people with with torches and pitchforks mm -hmm. you know no yeah i don't i don't think i'm gonna answer this one i'm afraid so um the good ending um you know it was very you know um sad and it seemed like it was like the end of the franchise um, was this meant to be the final game? I think when I was making that game, mm -hmm. in my mind, that was the end of a trilogy. Yeah. You know, I, I think I think in my mind, the original, the story, was going to be three games. And, and in all honesty, I think Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was where I kind of started letting myself be driven a little bit more by criticisms of the game than maybe I had before. Before, it was just really, really excited, yeah. you know, happy to have all this stuff. But whenever 3 came out, um, I, I was I really was starting to pay attention to criticism. You know, for instance, you know, even though I, I may have, you know, in some, you know, alternate life, may have left the series alone at 3, people were not happy with the jump scare. And it, it's, kind of a, it's kind of as simple as that. People weren't happy with the jump scare of Springtrap, and that mm -hmm. and that really bothered me. Um, and so then, that kind of in my mind, I wouldn't let the series rest in a way because I, I wanted I wanted to make a another entry that was really really scary again. Yeah. You know, and 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 I think I accomplished that with Five Nights at Freddy's yes. Four. You know, really focusing on really cool, really quick, unexpected jump scares yes. that kind of make you jerk. So yeah, so so honestly, the series kind of was nudged forward by me wanting to improve upon the last entry. Okay, awesome. That's interesting. Speaking about Five Nights at Freddy's Four, this was the next one. Um, July. Well, you originally planned it for it to be a Halloween release, right? And then you released it in July. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I had things to do. You know, the way that I, the way that I see it is that if you have something ready to go. Just do you it. Know. Yeah. I mean, what, 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 what's, what's the point? You know, I'm, I'm not a, you know, I, I wasn't a gigantic corporation, you yeah. know, with, you know, tr you know, releasing, uh, you know, advertise with a big marketing campaign, all yeah. targeting a specific date, trying to squeeze it between other releases. You know, I mean, I had people who were excited about the game and, and who were looking forward to it. And those are the only people that I was thinking about. You know, it's like, hey, yeah. there, you know, there's a, there's a fan base here and they're excited for this. You know, there's, you know, why, why not just go ahead and let them yeah. have it, and I'll hop, I'll just hop into the next project, you know. Yeah, and, and exactly. that served me really well for, you know, for the majority of the games. Yeah. Um, because I remember, um, I was on holiday, wasn't I? And you emailed me about um doing every like uh, a first thoughts on the game, and I remember you emailing me like I think it was like literally the day after saying, you know what, I'm just gonna release it. <laughs> so I think it, I think that made everybody excited about it though. Like everyone was like, right, we know what it's like now. Scott, please just release it now, um, because and you did so. I think like you know, I I, I played it on holiday and I have a lot of good uh, memories playing through it. Um, you know, while I'm get screaming when people are next door to me, because you know, on cruise ships, cabins are really close together, so I was full on <laughs> screaming in my cabin. I, I was honestly wondering what the next door neighbours were thinking about what the hell I was doing. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad that it ended up being a good memory. Sorry to stress you out. You're not the only person that, that I stressed out, by the way. So don't, you know, don't feel like you're getting isolated, trying to cause you trouble. I think, um, yeah, if I remember correctly, right after I released Finance of Phrase 4, I was sending out an email saying, hey, this game's out. Hey, this game's out. And I sent one to Markiplier, you know, and he emailed me back saying, you know, dude, I can't play this. I just got to, you know, this game conference just started. It's going to be going on for four days. You know, so he, I stressed him out too, because obviously everybody, at the time everybody was pestering him, you know, to, to play it immediately. <clears throat> and I think that he, you know, he was able to, you know, you know, be in the good sport that he is. He's still, he's still just like you did, you know, even, even though you were inconvenienced, you still found time to, you know, do videos yeah I always try to if you remember with FNAF World <laughs> and I was in hospital I still played it <laughs> yeah, oh yeah yeah that's right that's right you sure were yeah oh god oh I could I could never miss anything ever so with Five Nights at Freddy's 4 like you said um, I think you basically answered this question anyway about the game and the mechanics like you said that you wanted to make this more scarier um, you know back to like you know being anxious all the time and the interesting thing you did with this one is i feel like every game you make you try and implement a new mechanic that you haven't done before and uh, mm -hmm. this one was specifically to do with sound because you had to go to the doors and listen closely for breathing and i think that impacted the jump scare like a million times as scary because, you know, you, you, you're full on listening to the game. You have to listen to the game. So when you get that jump scare out of nowhere, while you're listening, waiting for them to breathe, you know, I think that really, you know, made the game stand out. Yeah, well, it, uh, yeah, lots of the games were kind of experimental with different ways of initiating, yeah. you know, the jump scare to see what was really effective. And, and yeah, I think I think looking into, you know, this big dark chasm in front of you, not knowing if there's a face, you know, two inches from your own face looking back at you, yes. and you having to commit to turn on the flashlight, and then you're, you know, it, yeah, I think I think that one really worked. I think that one really worked. Yeah, it's terrifying. Um, so how were these to model? Uh, were they, you know, just as hard as Spring Trap? You know, because it seemed like you were going all out on these uh, nightmare animatronics. Uh, for the designs. Yeah, the, the Nightmare animatronics were probably the most elaborate to model. I mean, I remember, um, which, yeah, anytime I start a new game, that's always the most difficult phase, is just starting into the modeling phase because I know that it's going to take a really long time. I, I, it's gonna, it takes a lot of patience, you know, a, a lot of attention to detail. You know, the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 models weren't mm -hmm. that bad. I think I modeled Freddy in two days, and then I wow. think I took that model and adjusted to make Bonnie in another day. Um, and then the ones from Pirates of Praise 2 were probably about the same day, maybe, you know, uh, you know, one or two days per character. And, I mean, that's working all day on them, but still, just a day or two per character. Yeah. Uh, I think Springtrap took maybe four or five days to make him. Yeah. Uh, and each of the Nightmare animatronics, I think I spent about a week and a half on each one. Uh, right. I, I think a couple of them even two weeks on each one just because lots of teeth <laughs> well, you know, a lot lots of tears in in the fabric yeah. you know which are not texture mapped on i mean those are actually kind of torn out into the model because i just think it looks a lot more convincing than trying oh, to right. you know uh, texture map them on there you know so i'd have to go in there really close and i would have to actually you know cut into that character you know yeah uh delete polygons and then straighten them all out to make them look like they're sharp corners rather than you know blocky squares yeah, so it's yeah. a lot of a, a lot of work but but but, but i mean totally t totally worth it though you know yeah yeah exactly so about the models um people were wondering about foxy's tongue so foxy originally had a tongue in the teaser did you take that out because of complications <laughs> with the game or anything uh, no i i took it out because i didn't think it was like it was scary on the teaser, you know. There's there's something about those, you know, those, those you know, long snake-like demonic tongues that yeah. just have they're kind of cool in theory, but they're not really scary in practice. Like mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a monster in a movie, you know, extend out, you know, its long tongue and you know, snake it around and then <laughs> me be scared by it. You know, they're, they're, they're yeah. just not very scary. So yeah, so I just took it out for the game. Yeah, awesome. Um, about this game, it created a bit of a divide between people. 
um, specifically the box at the end, and then the um, the TV advertisement with 1983, and then the uh, bite of 87 debate. How do you, did you feel about the reactions to that? Kind of like with Five Nights at Freddy's 3, where there was something I was kind of left unsatisfied with. Mm -hmm. The reaction to Five Nights at Freddy's 4, and then the box is tied into this, you know, very, very closely. I don't think that uh, people weren't really happy from a lore standpoint, you know, okay. even though I got the jump scares kind of right. Yeah. And the box really fit into that, that lore aspect. I, you know, I, I felt that it had all gone kind of too... It had strayed too far from an actual story in a way. Me, me just saying that, I'm gonna get torn apart for even saying that because people are gonna look at what I've ended up with. They're gonna be like, and you call this a story? Uh, but, but the Bang Finance of Phrase 4, it, it just, it got, it, it, it just, it kind of went a little too broad. It cast this net too wide for interpretation. I guess that's the best way to say it. You know, it, it went too broad for interpretation and that left people unsatisfied. You know, because whereas the other ones, yeah, there were, there were mysteries four ended up just too mysterious to the point where you really couldn't you know there was no real way to figure out what was going on and a lot of people unsatisfied and 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 like i said with you know jumping from three to four i knew i knew that i had to go in and straighten that out it's like you know people aren't really happy with this you know i, I need to make another game i need to kind of ground this again not necessarily in reality but i need to ground it in kind of storytelling again you know and and and, and really lay this down with like with what's going on you know obviously i i watch all the game theory videos you know and you know me and matt kind of some had sometimes had an antagonistic relationship back and forth you know i, I inconvenience him with my games and sometimes he inconveniences me with his theories you know but it's all in good fun you know but but i'll tell you he he, he did a video on that box and he kind of said that he thinks the contents of the box changed over the years you know, and I bet nobody gave that a whole lot of thought, but I, I saw that and I was like, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. The contents of that box have changed over the years because, you know, it's for that very reason. It's because, uh, you know, of what I was intending the game to be when it happened. And then after the reaction of it, I was like, I, I, need, to cr I need to craft this into something better for the, for the people who see this as important. And that, in, and that kind of indirectly does change the contents of the box, you know, because it, because it, it changes the contents of everything that came before. Um, yeah, so I thought that was a, I just thought that was an interesting observation on his part. Yeah, and uh, I think you said I think you mentioned this on um, on one of your Steam posts or something that you um, you put some things in sister location to ground out the story of FNAF Four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so um, I mentioned about the hospital fiasco. This was when FNAF World uh, was on the scene. Um, so, why did you decide to change things up and make FNAF World? Well, I do have some reasons for why I made it, even though they're not. It doesn't mean it was a good idea. Just you know, just because yeah. I want to go ahead and get that out front. Just because I had reasons for making it, doesn't mean it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, you know, one part of it was just that, I mean, you know, there's only there's only so much that you can let your mind focus on, you know, murders and tragedy and stuff like that. Before, yeah. you know, you kind of start cracking, even if it's just stories that you're making up. There's only so much there's only so much human suffering that a human mind can sit around and think about. And at yeah. that point, you know, I was two years in, you know, just fully committed to this gr grisly story of murders. And I had to, I, I had to make something more lighthearted. And, and, and in hindsight, what I should have done is, you know, I, sh I should have used that for a troll game, or I should have, yeah. you know, made something like, you know, uh, Foxy Fighters. You know, I, I should have just, I should have just done something that was obviously for fun and mm -hmm. not tried to somehow tie it in to a canon game. You know, and, and that's obvious to me now. But like I'm saying, you know, like I was saying, I'm not, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking completely rationally at the yeah. time. Um, you know, and whereas, like I was saying, Five Nights at Freddy's 1 was the right game at the right time, FNAF World, it, that wasn't a good time for it to be made because I was already in the rhythm of making games that were, you know, coming out n not too far apart from each other. You yeah. know, I was making them pretty fast, and that's what people were wanting and expecting, and that's what I was wanting to do anyway. I'm not, you know, blaming people for wanting that. That's what I had created that pattern, and I was happy with that. I liked making games really fast, you know, but that was just a really poor decision of a game to try to make fast. 
you know, in hindsight, like now would have probably been a better time to sit back and work yeah, on something like that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. mean, you know, like after all the kind of, after I'm kind of sad, after I was kind of satisfied with all the Canon games and, and, other, yeah. and other companies that, you know, kind of taken on some other projects, then I could sit back and maybe enjoy making an RPG, you know, and spend a couple yeah. of years on it, you know, and just make something really nice, kind of, you know, that looked like the, you know, the Desolate Hope, you know, really make some nice 3D models for it. Oh, and another mistake I made was FNAF World. I was designing it for mobile. I don't know. You know I can. I, this is a whole separate interview about what went wrong with FNAF World. So let's just let, <laughs> let, let's just move along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so how how would you treat the game now as an experience? Like, have you learned anything uh, making this game? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, I learned a lot. Yeah, in fact, right before right before you called, I was kind of thinking over that game, and I realized that. You know, that's probably the, the least valuable game I've ever made as far as profit is concerned. Mm -hmm. But it's also the single most valuable game yeah. out of the entire franchise. And the reason is because what I learned from FNAF World is what is driving every single project going on right now. It, it, is, it is serving as, as the gemstone of quality control in my mind. And it has solidified exactly what I have to do going forward. If, if I was treating the movie as I was treating my game series at the time I made FNAF World, mm -hmm. we would be three movies in to the to the FNAF movies by now. Yeah. And they would probably probably be terrible. <laughs> you know, if, if I if, if I had the mindset that, oh hey, it, it it's fine, right? The praise. People will love it. You know, regardless of, of, of quality, mm -hmm. then we would we would already have several movies and they would all be terrible. I mean I you know and and this you know ultimate custom night would have come out way too soon and it just served as a really important lesson for me that you should never take it, it, it taught me to never take for granted yeah how special it is to have a group of people who are eager to play what you make whenever i made the you know i'll, I'll use a desolate hope as my example again i saw one one person made a piece of fan art of that on the internet i found mm -hmm. it on google so i'm going to draw one of the characters and that was the most special thing to me yeah in the world that someone had drawn a picture of one of my characters like I yeah. can't even tell you how important seeing that one drawing was and it was just you know I, I'd have no idea who it was you know but then you know to have to have a fan base and to have kids that are drawing these pictures and you know send, I got I got a letter I got a letter from the other day addressed to Foxy Aww. you know and and, and 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 God bless the post office in my town for knowing me and for sending me these letters anyway I kid you not. It was it was addressed to Foxy, <laughs> only to Foxy, and I, and I think below it it might have uh, they might have had some other clue as to who it was who it was for. But the post office made sure to pass it along to me. Oh. You know, I mean, how how awesome is that? You know, and yeah. and, and the letter was written to Foxy. You know, it, it was asking Foxy a question. That's uh, so awesome. You know that, that 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 that's so. There's nothing more priceless than that. Yeah. You know, and and, and to have to have a fan base. You know. Of people who care about these characters in the games, you know that is the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, and they should never be taken for granted. Yeah. And you know, and you know, who cares if something is commercial and who cares if something is going to make a whole bunch of money? You know, you just have to make sure that you that whenever those people finally get to see this next thing, that it's something that that lifts them up and makes them happy, and it's something that it was everything that they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. You know, like that that's all that matters, you know, and I, I need to write that kid back I'm gonna go get a big envelope and put a bunch of foxy plush toys and I'm gonna write a letter as foxy I'm I, I've never Aww. done that before. but I'm gonna totally do it and and, and and I'm gonna even make a little tear in the paper <laughs> and Say that it was my, my, my hook that yeah, that, that hook. I'm totally yeah. Do that. yeah, that's awesome <laughs> That's really awesome. But, but yeah, so yeah, that, that, that's a, that's a long, long story but no FNAF world taught me to, to never take for granted your fan base yeah exactly and the final question which everybody's wanted to ask is will chipper ever return like he said he would <laughs> hey chipper chipper is listen all of these games are haunted by by different spirits right right but the real spirit haunting this whole franchise is chipper <laughs> chipper is haunting this whole franchise I mean, I, I received you know I received a box of, of, of merchandise the other day, you know, like uh, uh, manufacturer samples, and right. there's a plush toy of Chipper, well, El Chip, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I but I, 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 but I held that plush toy, and I was looking at El Chip, and I was thinking <laughs> to myself, 
you know, you got merch. You got merch, Chipper. Yeah. You know, you, you were you were in, you were an abysmal failure, but you found your way into this merch. And there you sit <laughs> with that goofy grin on your face. You know. <laughs> yeah. No. So Ch- Chipper's already back. He's he's infiltrated the franchise. Yeah. Well, I see. So L Chip to you was um, a reference to Chipper. Oh yeah, of course he is. Yeah. Foot so. Now, this location. Um, I feel like this was like the biggest change up in the franchise because you added voice actors um, you know you went beyond the limits of click team um, to a lot of people where you know you added a sense of free roam in this like huge location is that maybe why you decided to put voice acting in um, to change things up a little bit I think I think I think for Five Nights at Freddy's one through four, I consider that all like one one sitting for me. Like I, I sat down, I feel like I just sat down and made all four games in one sitting. Yeah. And it was only after that that I sat back and thought, hmm, you know, how, how can I improve upon this? How can I add something new? And so that's when I was, you know, entertaining new ideas in my mind. Yeah. And yeah, voice acting just just kind of I don't remember exactly what it was, but man, I'm sure glad that I did. You know, I bumped into just some incredible talent. You know, that I got to use. Um, obviously, I mean, uh, al- almost all of them, if not all of the voice actors that got for Sister Location have come back to reprise their roles or other roles, you know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, that's awesome. It's amazing people. Yeah, they really are. Hello, by the way, voice actors, if you're watching. <laughs> Hello, voice actors. <laughs> um, so... I think you've basically answered some of these, so I, I asked like what inspired you to make the game style so different. I mean like I think you've answered that throughout the interview. You just wanted to make something different compared to the others. So how were these two model and design? Um, I, I, I think the I think the sister location I think the sister location characters are probably were, were my favourite ones to model. Um I, I just I really like the I really like the metallic kind of look. I, I, I always kind of tend to lean sci-fi, which has actually gotten me in trouble a couple of times with this franchise. You know, any, anytime I try to lean sci-fi, which is my natural inclination, you know, people are like, hey, whoa, 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 this is a horror story. And then I have to somehow try to guide it back, <laughs> you know. Um, and then rightfully so, the first game's a horror movie. It's not sci-fi. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I wanted it to be sci-fi. I wanted it to look really sleek and polished and you know, I really enjoyed modeling all of those characters and yeah, yeah like I said I think those are probably some of my favorite characters of the series so here's an interesting one which I I, I, I don't know if you could answer or not um, so in night four when we're inside the suit a lot of people wanted to know whose suit is that whose suit is that <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to answer that for you. That's fine. That so is... that, that, that's going to that's gonna have to remain a topic of discussion. Any memories or favorite moments? I really enjoyed making that game. I have I have nothing but good memories about that. Yeah, awesome. I, I really enjoyed making that, and I really enjoyed working on the trailer. I think I, I think that's my favorite trailer, the ones that I made, and I loved seeing the reactions. Everybody just everybody just seemed to, and honestly, the, I think I think that's what that's what creates the memories for me is just seeing how things are kind of received and you know obviously if something is received really well then i know i did my job right you know and i know that you know i know that i did something right and yeah being able to, so i think my favorite moment was getting to release that trailer and just seeing all the excitement from it and then i knew and then i knew that i was on the right track awesome yeah i love that trailer I, re- I think i did a reaction yes i did i did a reaction um i loved it it's so good and different as well um compared to your other trailers too because I think um, the favourite trailers from you to me um, are most likely FNAF 3 and Sister Location um, I love it when you put like um, your own cutscenes in the trailers I think it's really awesome um, I have no idea how you did that um, how did you do that if I can ask that like how did you put the models in cutscenes was that with click team i don't know anything about this, this stuff <laughs> oh, oh well we, i mean before i before i was making video games i mean i was i was an animator you know i mean i got my degree in computer animation and i had a, a several jobs where i was you know none of actually none of my jobs have ever involved 
making games at all, you know, it's always been about using a 3D Studio Max, uh, obviously the modeling software that I use, and you know, and, and that's a full animation program. You know, so whenever I went to make the cutscenes, I wouldn't use Click Team at all. Uh, I would just, you know, uh, uh, go back to my old school skills, bring my characters together, and animate them. You know, I'd render out, you know, movies, drop those into my video editing software, and there you go. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I've, I've watched some of your old um, animations, by the way, oh, on no. YouTube. They're all out there, Scott. <laughs> oh, I know. I know, man. I know. No, there's there's I, no getting away from it. No, them. they were good. Honestly, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> they were really good. My favourite one, right, was um, with the cat. So the, the cat under the bridge. And the kid was always scared to... Uh, see the oh, see the yeah, cat, but yeah. he always used to leave her food. And what he didn't know is that she had babies. That's so cute. Hey, hey, that that that's a true story. That is based off of a true story. Uh, my family was we were living in a little apartment complex, and there was always this this creepy, ratty looking cat that we all started fondly calling Demon Cat. <laughs> you know, and in fact, I took uh, you know and my two sons now who are teenagers you know they were just three and four at the time yeah you know, but we actually went out searching for demons we made an event of it one night we all got flashlights <laughs> and went searching around the apartment complex looking for the demon cat and i even got a photograph of it and, it, and, and man I, I don't i don't know whatever happened to it but you know we we peered under a car and i took a picture and of course his eyes were glowing green and you know we found demon cat you know but but, but then but but then but then true to the story like uh I don't know if it was a week or two later or whatever. You know, it was a mama cat had little babies. You Aww. know, so it it wasn't really it wasn't really this big bad cat. It was it was just a mama. And of course, everybody was taking care of it. Like every single person was setting out food for for her. So she was Aww. well taken care of. That's awesome. Um, actually, uh, thinking about your voice right now, you you did narrate those, right? Oh oh, oh yeah, you know that 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 was that was me and all of the voice roles. I mean. Uh, well, all the all the male roles, obviously, but yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, th these days I'm so fortunate to, you know, just, I'm so fortunate to be able to go online and be able to connect with voice talent. Uh, not that I, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to afford it back at the time anyway. But y you know, the internet was brand new. I mean, you're talking, we're talking, 15, 16, 17 years ago, when you know, I mean, yeah, the internet was around, but you couldn't just go online and connect with the kind of talent that you can today. You know. So I was pretty much on my own when it came to voice acting. Okay, uh, moving on to your, the, I'd say the highlight of your trollness. Five Nights at Freddy's 6. The game you originally planned for, to be a pizza simulator, an 8-bit pizza simulator. And everyone was like, okay, okay, let's, 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 let's have it. Um, and you released the whole game without anybody knowing anything for a whole year like <laughs> why <laughs> just okay. for the surprise well no there there actually was reasoning behind it it wasn't just to be a troll okay and the reason the reasoning was the, the reasoning was kind of complicated and it was not a very fun that was not a fun year i mean that, that was a game that that was a game that was born out of necessity because i needed to i needed to kind of bring a conclusion to several several events from the series however whenever i was in whenever i was in the early stages of it and i think i i think i'd released a very early idea that i was working on another game but i think it was someone on the it was someone on steam that just made a passing comment it was just a passing comment you know nobody paid any attention to it you know he'd, he'd better not just start teasing a game like he always has been before you know because it's just not going to cut it anymore or something like that i don't know it was just some it was just some passing comment but it just made me start thinking it's like this this next game I, I i really can't do that you know i can't just i can't just do the same thing that i did before i can't just start releasing teasers because for some reason at that time i just knew that if i went through another year of just releasing teasers that would give everybody a lot of fatigue like that would that would fatigue people that would wear people out and it was it was going to rub people the wrong way you know and i can't explain why i felt that way but i just i just really felt that way but at the same time, I needed to resolve a lot of issues with the story. And so those two factors combined 
that's the way that I handled it the way that I did. I worked on a whole I worked on that game for a year in secret all the while the fan base was, you know, getting pretty agitated that, you know, I wasn't talking to them and I wasn't working on anything. But I but I knew that, that was the way that it just had to be. It had to be this way this time. This game could not have a lot of hype behind it because that wasn't the purpose. The purpose of it was not to make a lot of money. The purpose of it was not to build a lot of hype. It was just to resolve some plot points that people wanted to see. And so the result of that was me going into the dark for a year and then and then just dropping a game. And there you have it. And and, and you know, and even on the Steam store, it's you know, it, it it's not there it's not there to draw a bunch of attention to itself. You know, it's using all the really simplest screenshots that that is truly there for just people who wanted to have kind of a resolution to some of the story. It was a it was still a a a, a big highlight though. For it like the surprise just, I think, blew everybody away, though, to be honest. I mean, the, it's one of my favourite memories where I'm just, you know, being Freddy, throwing pizzas, and then the game glitches, and then you sat in a room with Scrap Baby. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it was the biggest surprise ever. Well, good. We'll see a little bit, and, that, and that's exactly what it needed to be. Because just like every game, kind of needs to be a little bit different. Yeah. You know, the way that it's approached needs to be different too. And the reason why I brought that comment was because it just kind of reminded me. It's like I, you, you know, you can't just do, you can't just do the same thing that you've been doing. You can't yeah. just start releasing teasers again randomly and just expect everybody to keep caring. You know, so I knew that I had to handle it differently. And and yeah, and I think that I was successful with that. Yeah. I think it worked out well. Yeah, it did. Um, specifically as well with changing things up a little bit, you added the um, the simulator starts. So you make your own pizzeria, yeah. you put your own animatronics and designs in. Um, I think that was a really, really cool idea. And, you know, it, 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 split, it split the game up as well. So you're not just always in an office. You have a break from being scared. And, you know, you can make your own pizzeria. Simple as that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Awesome. Next up is Ultimate Custom Night. So this was the literally released um, a, 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 a month ago. Has it been a month already? Mm-hmm. What? Maybe, maybe a little more even. With Ultimate Custom Night, you know, having 50 plus animatronics, was this bigger than you originally wanted it to be? So, did you originally think, right, I'm going to put 50 animatronics into this game, or did you just keep building it up? I, I mean, I always planned, I always, I always knew that it was going to be a, a, a full, a full-sized game. I mean, you know, originally, uh, I mean, I guess at the very beginning, it was going to be an add-on to Pizzeria Simulator, but it was very, it was very soon afterwards that I realized, you know, this is going to be just a, a full Five Nights at Freddy's experience. You know, this just needs to be a, its, its own full game. And yeah, and originally it was going to be, you know, 40 characters, but then I kind of uh, filled those slots up pretty quick, and there were just too many characters left out, you know, so I had to add an extra row, and even then there were too many characters left out, so I just kept on adding, 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 and I found a lot of really good, uh, I found some really good tricks to really help the program be able to handle it, you know, because like my problem, my biggest problem with Pizzeria Simulator, and I'm just kicking myself, was that you know, I, I just I wasn't utilizing I wasn't utilizing some of the graphic features properly. You know, especially with the jump scares. You know, because I had these I had these high resolution jump scares, and it would just run out of video memory so fast. I had to just chop out frames. But you know, but there were just some really neat tricks. You know, to to render them smaller and then scale them up for the sake of the game. And you really can't tell when you're playing it. They might look a little bit fuzzier. But they still look pretty high quality. But you know, it, it just allowed me to to squeeze in all these characters and all these jump scares and just all this content, you know, really seamlessly. And um, was there any scrapped ideas at all uh, for the game? So anything that you wanted in but you couldn't, or you just didn't like how it turned out? No. Whereas, whereas in some of the in some of the prior in some of the in some of the other games. Yeah, there had been some different ways I considered taking it, but no, Ultimate Custom, I, there was really only the way that it, it could go, you know, and I kept on just kind of uh, adding on to it. Oh, oh, oh yeah, but I but I will I will say this just for the record, you know, to all your viewers listening, I'm going to give you credit where credit is due for, for coming up with the idea for being able to, to purchase new office skins. 
because I think that because originally I had had it to where they would just randomly pop up. You know, whenever I gave you that original test copy to play, you know, you had a one percent chance of each of those offices appearing, and then you made a you made a comment saying, "Hey, it'd be cool if you could unlock those." You know, and then I changed that, and now it's a, I think it's a great feature of the game. So awesome! I feel I feel like I've participated in something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought the having the offices as re- a reward would be good, and I think you put the um, the uh, the score amounts for each office like perfectly. So I think you just said that you were satisfied with the game, um, but are you satisfied with this possibly being the last game that you might create, the last FNAF game? Yeah, I, I am. I, I really am. Starting with Final Fantasy Phrase Three, there was always something that I wasn't completely happy with, and that would become a core principle of the next game. Yeah. With three, I wasn't completely happy with the jump scares, so I worked on four. With four, I wasn't completely happy with the storyline, so I made Sister Location. With Sister Location, I feel like it leaned a little too sci-fi and left a few plot points. Well, well there were a few plot points that were, that were really bothering people, so then I made Pizzeria Simulator. But then I, even with Pizzeria Simulator, even though I was really happy with the game, um, I don't know. I just felt like it needed a, it needed a, a, a capstone. It needed a, you know, another, another, some other bookend, just some experience. And Ultima Custom Night brought in all of the characters, you know, and um, and it's been, and, you know, and I think it's, I think so, I think so far it's been the best reviewed of the games, which you know thrills me. Of course, I'm really happy to see that everybody's just seemed to really enjoy it. Uh, it people, people have, have even welcomed a DD into their hearts after all this time. You know, it, it took took everyone a little bit of time, but I think I think I think everybody likes DD now. So, um, wow, well, um, maybe, maybe not. No, am I wrong? Um, <laughs> I'll uh, tell you what. Everybody, <laughs> just leave a comment in Baco's video if you disagree. <laughs> I no, I like DD. Um, she she can just sometimes spawn at awkward times for me. Um, I mean, with fifty twenty mode, there was no stopping. Um. Yeah. DD, so you know, I wasn't really bothered about. Uh, I'm just gonna say, sh- sh- does sh- it's Shadow D? Does she have a specific name? Should you just say Shadow DD? Um, I named Shadow DD X O R, and I'm not sure why. But but like but like with uh, most of the other characters in this franchise, whenever I'm making them, some name immediately comes to mind. It doesn't mean anything, but that that's the name of Shadow DD. XOR. Okay. Or well, is that people said that might be Zor or is it XOR? It's just XOR. Okay. Awesome. And um, but yeah, XOR was just with the mechanics of 5020 mode anyway, so you can't you couldn't be annoyed with XOR because it was part of the mechanics on what to do to try and beat it. Speaking about 5020 mode, <laughs> have you tried it? After the game has like been released, you you know it's possible now. Oh no, no no no! no <laughs> listen, my my score, my, my high score is still just six thousand eight hundred. You know, making making custom nights. The the tricky thing about it, and actually, I only really had to worry about this here. But you know, I, I know I've mentioned other times that any time I've ever made a custom a custom night, I've always assumed that the most difficult mode was impossible. I mean, because that was never the intent of the game. When making the game, there are always five nights, and I make sure that those nights are beatable. I make sure that the Sixth night is beatable. I make sure that nightmare mode is beatable, you know. But as far as like you know, finding as far as setting all the you know the difficulties all to twenty, it's never been a goal to make it possible. And really, one of the main reasons is because if I ever get to a point where I could beat it, then everybody else would beat it within the first twelve hours of the game being released. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't. Me being able to beat something is not a super high bar to clear as far as, you know, someone else being able to come along and beat it. With Ultima Custom Night, it was really tricky because unlike the other games, I did, there was, there was a burden on me to make sure that it could be beaten. And th- this is one of the areas where I think, you know, all these years of d- designing games really benefited me because even though I could never beat it, and I still can't beat it, Everything was designed in such a way to where I was 99.9% confident that nothing was going to conflict with something else in a way to where it would genuinely make it impossible. And it will, okay, with, 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 okay, with one exception, 
one one oversight might have been the whole issue of coin collection. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think I do agree that it, it, might, it might have it might have actually been impossible to collect enough coins, you know. But but other mechanics provided kind of a back door to solve that, you know. I mean, the I you know being able to watch keep something on your camera and them not moving, you know that that is that is intentional. It might have been you know used in ways that I hadn't intended, you know. But it but it was intentional because obviously you don't want to be you don't want to have a character on screen. And then suddenly pull down your screen and jump scare you. That would be teleporting. It gives, it gives, you know, it's kind of immersion breaking if something is one place. You know, so the idea of locking them in place by watching them is is a game mechanic, and it was used by everybody in a really clever way to kind of bypass mechanics that might have otherwise made the experience unplayable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome to know. So the watching the plushies was um, intentional, where they couldn't get you. Basically, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you know, and, and like Lefty is. There are several characters in the bay that way. Lefty is one of them. Also, as long as you keep the camera on Lefty, Lefty will never attack you. Yeah, I mean, th- that's kind of been a feature in I think pretty much all all of the games, or at least many of them. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you could actually get um, thirty Faz coins. By the way, I don't think I didn't try that though, um, because what we what we did was we kept lifting up the monitor which made uh, bb and jj and helpy spawn so we just you know we could get i we could get 10 faz coins for the death coin in literally 10 seconds so mm-hmm. i think i think i think it, it is possible to get the plushies if you just you know i think it was i think it was just like a month ago that someone finally beat custom night for sister location before the patch came out Oh you know, yes, I saw the, that. Yeah, with the power. You know, you know, yeah. so, someone did that. So I'm sure that you know, so who knows? Maybe six months, nine months, a year, two years down the road, someone's going to take it upon themselves to beat Custom Night. You know, no death coin, buying all the plushes. Yeah. You know, and just really, and just really, and just really torment themselves with that. And so that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah. Um. I'm. That's not going to be me. Just letting you know that. It's not going to be you. Come on, man. <laughs> well. I would do it in front of a bet, but you know. <laughs> no, no, you you've served your time. Wow. Okay. I, I don't think I would be able to, honestly. Maybe like for a charity stream, like uh, something like that. I could maybe do something with it. But yeah, Ultimate Custom Night, uh, one of my favourite games, by the way, in the in the series. It's in. It's on the top for me. Good. Really, really awesome, and a nice send off as well, Scott. Bringing them all together, yeah. You know, and I feel like it was a great send off to the game, and I think it's left a lot of people satisfied as well. Though that's that, that's a point I wanted to make. Um, I'm satisfied, just letting you know that, and I think a lot of people are satisfied with this too. Like you know, it, we understand that it's the last, well, the last one, and yeah. Speaking about it being the last. Well, that's, that's- that's, that's all that matters to me, so I'm glad to hear that. Awesome. Um, you mentioned um, in the during the interview that you've be you've watched Matt Pat's theories and stuff. Um, has there ever been a theorist or somebody you've watched on YouTube and you thought, you know what, this is actually quite close or like very accurate to the story I wanted to tell or something like that? Like if they were right, close to being right. Or something. Yeah, yeah, but but I, I but I can't I can't say anything whenever I see that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but but like I said, I can't jump in and, and confirm it because then people would stop stop caring at all. Then they would just wait for me to come yeah out and give yeah the to say something. So I, yeah, yeah. So I would just have to look at that. So I would just have to look at that comment and just kind of nod to myself like you got it. <laughs> you know, you 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 got it right, friend. But <laughs> you can't say you know, anything. No one, yeah. but no one's gonna ever know. You yeah. Know? Has that been hard to do that, to stop yourself from, you know, trying to reveal stuff? Because I remember a while ago um, in the uh, Matt Pat's live stream when we were all involved, you were putting things on the website about um, like some little hints and stuff to try and like guide us to the right direction. <laughs> but, but we still never got it. Um, <laughs> um, it, 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 has, it has been difficult and the times that I have tried to, to to step in and say something have, have usually been mistakes yeah um because that, that, that's part of the fun of it right you know mm-hmm. people you know the the discussion is 
just as much fun as well. That, that, that's that's what it's all about. You know, yeah. People really people really enjoy that. And the times that I've stepped into, I don't know. I, I've learned to just I've learned to just focus on making the games. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. let the community do the talking, and and they really enjoy that. But yeah, but sometimes I'll see, like I said, sometimes I'll see someone say something that was way out there and i want to jump in and say no 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 that's that's, yeah. that's not like like one of the big things for a while was you know whenever sister location first came out mm-hmm. there was adult theory oh, you know yeah and, yeah <laughs> you know and, and and i saw and i saw that and i'm like oh no you know and, 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 it, and it wasn't completely off base like i could see where it was being derived from so it's yeah. not like it was someone just trying to cause trouble for no reason yeah it was just a theory but i but i was like like I, I have to step in. Like I have to do something to fix this right away. Mm-hmm. And 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 my response to that to fix it evolved into, you know, a pretty simple solution. I would just release a new teaser yeah. that would just kind of steer it in the correct direction. Yeah. You know, and and that is and that was the right way to handle it. It's not to directly interact with the community, but to just release a new teaser. You know, that just kind mm-hmm. of guides it back. And I did that very soon very soon like within a couple of days after yeah, adult yeah. theory gaining popularity and i kind of guided it back to where it was supposed mm-hmm. to be um yeah and then like i said sometimes someone would get a good idea but i can't say anything about that either you know i just have to i've just tried to monitor the community monitor the comments monitor the theories and then when the group as a whole mm-hmm. starts getting the wrong idea that usually means that um you know i you know, sometimes it just means that I need to do a better job of storytelling, and then I try to use that as kind of course correction for the next thing that I do to guide, guide the story the right way, you know? Yeah, exactly. Have I ever been right on anything? <laughs> like, close to anything uh, at all? Or have I just been completely <laughs> wrong for four years? It, it, that, that's, a, that's a difficult question to answer, because there are really two kinds of people who have... There are two kinds of theorists you know, mm-hmm. one one kind is the kind of uh, viewer or a member or whatever who just who takes all the known facts mm-hmm. and only uses those to put together a storyline. Yeah, you know, which is kind of kind of what you know uh, Matt Pat does. Yeah, and then the other kind is taking those few facts and then just add you know ad libbing a lot more taking more creative freedom as to where the story might go yeah yeah you know so in other words one type is trying to figure out what happened and the other type is the kind that tries to figure out what might happen like like after another six months or after another year after the next game or whatever you know and then try to figure it out so one is much more speculative than mm-hmm. the other i guess that's what i'm trying to say yeah. so so it's hard to so you know that being the case it's hard to gauge people as how right or how wrong they were whenever one you know whenever a lot of people are you know obviously adding a lot more of their own imagination to yeah, the mix you know what yeah, i mean yeah but i can't i cannot all right i'll say this i cannot remember a time whenever i watched one of your theory videos and just rolled my eyes like oh my gosh you know okay. like he, he's, you know he he's he, he lost it you know so <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll take that i'll take that <laughs> yeah because i'm i'm like um I just do videos on just ideas and stuff. Like, if I have an idea, I just say it. Because I like to try and make the community uh, expand more. Do you know what I mean? Not just set their mind on one idea. Like, you know, with any theory, there's always multiple ideas to something. And that's what I tried to do with Ultimate Custom Night and stuff recently. Is try to give the community ideas to have their own judgment on the game. Um, I think MatPat has a lot of pressure to just do one set plan um, because if he tries mm-hmm. to go with other ideas and stuff, his audience starts to think like, well, hold on here, you, you're going all over the place. You, you're telling us loads of ideas and not just one solid idea. Well, well, I mean, I, yeah, he, he, you know, he's got a lot more pressure on him, obviously, just because of you know, the, the audience. Yeah. You know, the, the, that goes with anything else. There's always going to be a lot more pressure on him and a lot more scrutiny and a lot more yeah. criticism, you know, mm-hmm. focused on him. You know, I, I think I think he's managed it really well without... Uh, yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah, I think he's done really well. You know, and, and, and yeah, like like I was saying, uh, th- th- that's why it's hard to tell you if you've ever been really right or really wrong because you lean more in the, into the speculative crowd. Yeah, you know, you add, yeah. Your, your, your theories are much more speculative about what could be going on rather than trying to put together solid timelines and stuff like that you know yeah yeah okay 
Next question I'd like to ask is, how is the movie going? Because I know a lot of people have been wondering about this. The movie's been going really well. You know, the, the first few years of the franchise, everybody was trying to get a movie out as fast as possible, like to catch the, the hype wave and stuff. But now looking back, I'm really glad that that didn't happen because something I've really started to something that I've really started to come to to, to to want over these last few years is I want that movie to be able to stand on its own as a good movie and not ride the coattails of a different part of the franchise. You know, mm -hmm. because because then you know, for instance, you know, if if you if if you were to make a movie that just had the name Five Nights at Freddy's without a whole lot of emphasis on the quality of the movie itself, then yeah, if it, if, if it happened during the, the peak of the popular Five Nights at Freddy's, it would do really well. But if the franchise as a whole, you know, had waned a little bit, then the movie wouldn't do well either. Like, I, I want the movie to stand on its own. Yeah. I want the movie to, to be good on its own right. I want it to be a great movie. And for that reason, I'm really glad it didn't happen in those first few years because I think too much emphasis would have been placed on getting it out as fast as possible and you know one of the challenges one of the challenges with the movie and one of the reasons why it has taken so long it's actually really difficult to it's really difficult to make a script of this i've seen i've, I've had the privilege of working with a, a couple of studios now obviously talked to a lot of directors i've had a lot of scripts come across my desk i've had a lot of ideas pitched and you know one of the biggest challenges oh yeah and, I, and i've written three scripts on my own um uh just and i've struggled honestly with the same problem as, as lots of these other directors which is just the fact that with eight games what five books including the the security log book and the the uh, i forget the name Freddy of the files one. yeah yeah exactly yeah. you know so with, so with the eight games five books you know just thousands over thousands of videos and fan theories and and this and that and and timelines and all this stuff too many you know the people i work with so far have either looked at it all been completely overwhelmed and decided to do something completely original just start completely over and obviously that doesn't work and a couple other guys have tried to incorporate everything into some you know master script that includes every you know every aspect every character every idea and obviously that doesn't work either because then it's just a you know a dumpster fire it's just too much to squeeze into two hours you can't do it you know you cannot do it and you know originally the script was going to be based on the books which eventually i decided was not was not the way to go you know the books were the books were originally designed for people who just wanted who just wanted extra stories you know they they, they wanted a little bit more detail more story but that wasn't that was never intended to be the definitive story of Five Nights at Freddy's. And people who go, people who go to see the movie aren't going to want to see a retelling of the books. They're going to want to see the first game. They're going to want to see a retelling of the story that got them interested in the first place. You know, the first game had the right atmosphere, the right characters, and that's what people are going to want. And um, ideally, if the first movie does really well, I think it would work great as a trilogy. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's 1, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, and Five Nights at Freddy's 3, based on the first three games. I'm not going to go into the first movie with that mentality, though. You know, I, I've seen too many, I've seen too many good movies get kind of sidetracked by trying to set up future movies. I'm, a, I'm not going to fall into that. Um, I'm just going to really focus on telling a good story with this first one. But yeah, I've, I've, I've seen some interesting things, and I'm going to try to be really careful, you know, not to, not to sound critical of some of the ideas that have that I've seen because like I said, you know, there were a lot of challenges to writing a script for this, even, even for me, cause there's just so much information, but there are some things that I'm really glad never, never made it, <clears throat> you know, and one of them being, one of them being that I, uh, something that I actually heard on, I think it was a, a Matt Pat on a live stream was musing about bad ideas, bad ideas that could potentially happen in a Five Nights at Freddy's movie and one of the ones that he just brushed off and laughed about was the idea of plush toys coming to life and I heard that and that, that's another time where I wanted to jump in and say something but I knew that I couldn't because that's, that is something that actually could have happened you know it, it wasn't a full-blown script but somebody somebody had that idea 
and could have implemented it and there wouldn't have been a whole lot that I could have done about it at the time. So that, that's, that's, a, that's a scary thought and that's, that's kind of the risk, you know, of, that's kind of the risk of, a, of not really understanding a franchise really well and then trying to come up with something that's, I, I, I don't know, that, 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 that would have been, <laughs> that would have been really bad. But yeah, I heard him, I heard him mention that comment on his live stream. I was thinking to myself, you have no idea that that actually almost happened. That specific idea, plush toys coming to life and taking over Manhattan, that actually almost happened. <laughs> uh, I actually kind of want to see that now, though. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. It, it, it just m- maybe it would work better with a different name, but yeah, I mean I the community's so um, talented and stuff. Maybe they could make a little uh, cartoon or something, like an animation of it happening as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. But, but yeah, but but, but it, to it, in short, though, I think that everything's where it where it needs to be right now. You know. Um, um. So, what's next? Um. What are you got? Any future projects or anything or anything that you're working on? I'm I'm gonna try to take life a little easier. I think I did finally get a couple of a couple of big deals signed with some companies, and I'll be able to provide details on that later but there are a few a few a, a few big things in the works that are that are happening right now which is the virtual reality game is is going and the uh, augmented reality game is going and I know most people uh, you know the only example they can think of for augmented reality would be Pokemon Go uh-huh. you know but, but really augmented reality game just means you know you hold up your phone and, and you see it kind of overlaid on the screen yeah you yeah. know it's kind of half and half between what you're really seeing and then something superimposed so you, like I, you know I don't think it's not going to have any kind of you know you're, you're not going to be running through the bushes in your neighbor's yard trying to catch Freddy <laughs> Fazbear or anything like that you know it, 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 it's going to be Tell something <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm thinking it'll be kind of like a you know a, a party game something to do with your friends you know yeah. creeping through the dark you know, creeping through your house, and then somebody's going to jump out at you. Yeah. But you know, but that's that's in the early stages. But I think it's going to be really cool. Um, <clears throat> so that that's in the works, and uh, I'm I'm in talks with a company right now to start porting Five Nights at Freddy's to um, to major consoles right now. And I, I'm going to hold off on that because you know until I have more details on it. Yeah. But, but yeah, you know, I'm really encouraged by that. For for the longest time, I wasn't willing to sign on with any companies because I was keeping the series too tight under wraps. You know, I, I really wanted to be protective of the story. I didn't want other companies to come in and add characters. I didn't want other companies to come in and add storylines. Yeah, and I'm still and I'm still holding on to that. You know, my you know my deals with them are very very specific. Mm-hmm. You know, they do, they don't have free reign to add storylines and characters. Um, but I am, but I am more open to to getting help now. You know, I'm, I'm more open to letting other companies do do what I can't do. Like, you know, I don't know how to make an augmented reality game. I can't do that. On my own. I don't know how to make a virtual reality. Game. I can't do that on my own. Yeah. So. <clears throat> awesome. But yeah, I'm, I'm working really closely. You know, uh, and I've, I've I've done my best to pick really good people to work with. So. Yeah, good things. Exciting, very exciting. So we've got these, these, um, the VR, the AR, the the movie, um, so co- my possible console port. So yeah, really excited. So I think a lot of people are going to be excited for those, definitely. If you could get the second, I think you've just answered this, but this is a little bit different. If you could get a second chance. Um, to go back to 2013, 14, would you do it all over again in the same way? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd go back and. I mean, obviously there are little details I want to maybe polish up on, but no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change anything. I mean, you know, yeah, in 2014, I think I mentioned this on an online interview. But, interview, but you know, I was considering making another. Legacy of Flan game, which is some series I used to make, some obscure series I used to work on many years ago that like two people know about, um, or, or or work on another, uh, or work on the sequel to Death Let Hope, or make an indie horror game, you know, featuring security cameras, you know, and that was a long that was a long decision, you know, and it could have gone any direction, and then I chose the indie horror game, and then same thing with the sequel. After I made the first one, I almost didn't make a sequel to it, you know, I was considering two or three different game ideas. 
Um, but no, you know, it, it, everything turned out for the best, I think. I wouldn't go back and, and mess with it. Did, did your family through the course of these years give you any good ideas or like any, did they implement anything in any way or influence the story? Well, I, I will tell you, my oldest son, my oldest son, Ian, he contributed an idea for the first game that has become iconic to the series and the series could not go on without it. Right. And I need to take a moment to give him full credit for that. My son Ian, whenever, after they had been beta testing, I was like, hey, so do you guys have any suggestions for anything? Like, what do y'all think I should add to this? And Ian said, you should make it so that when you click on Freddy's nose, it honks. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, like that, that, that'd be kind of a fun Easter egg. Yeah. So I added it in, and now and now the rest is history. Like a, like a game can't go by without being able to yeah. click on Freddy's nose. Like it's become just, you know. We all expect it, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so, yeah, so, 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 so big, big shout out to, big shout out to Ian for, Thank you, Ian. for coming up with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, you know, but... It, but but I mean in all seriousness I mean it's just you know it's just nice to have a, a, a support group it's great to have people around you to support you yeah I mean the, the, that, that's really the, that's really the most important thing even more important than directly contributing ideas it's just you know people who are people who are around you and love you and support you and they encourage you to try one more time you know you can't can't find anything more valuable than that yeah you're exactly right there yeah um do you have any favorite games? I think you said before that you liked Mega Man, or am I completely wrong here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, it, all right. Well, I'm, I'm definitely a, I'm definitely a retro gamer. I, whenever I pick a system to play on, I never go beyond Super Nintendo. Uh, so I'm so I'm stuck in 1993. I have my I have my Nintendo and I have my Super Nintendo. All the games that I play are on those two. And yeah, and I, and I pick a game every once in a while that I'll try to really you know, master or whatever. Yeah, Mega Man 3 was my big accomplishment. I could play through that game Buster only. Very proud of me. And and uh, and only recently, I know this will be this will be really random, but recently I I, uh, I found a new a new gem that I that defeated me as a kid, which is UN Squadron on Super Nintendo. It's a, a side-scrolling airplane game. I, I, you know, used to used to tear me apart as a kid. You know, but I've been really playing that every day and dedicating myself to it. And I beat it on normal mode. Now I'm fighting through on hard mode. Um, you know, just, just whenever I get a chance. I don't have a whole lot of time to play games. I mean, a, a, a few days ago, by the way, on the Reddit, um, a lot of people were posting things about your birthday, right? Um, a lot of people would like to know when your birthday actually is, if you're allowed to say. It's just so we, you know, we can say happy birthday. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, there, there's been a lot of a lot of confusion about this. Yes, because depending on what year you would try to look me up, a different birthday would appear on Wikipedia. Yeah. And a different picture. Yes, that. Yes, um, so the original just... picture. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> so, 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 so I'll, I'll just tell this right now. My birthday is February 31st. Okay. For some reason, I've always thought it was like summer. Uh, for some reason. So February, awesome. Okay. So, that's the wrap for the interview. Apart from one final thing, would you like to say any final thoughts um, to the people? I, I, I think I think I would just like to uh, make sure everybody out there knows how much I how much I really appreciate this this fan base and just how much I appreciate all of the support. Um, whenever back whenever before all this Five Nights at Freddy stuff had started. And I had just made the Desolate Hope. I was online and I found one piece of fan art that someone had made of the Desolate Hope characters. Mm -hmm. You know, just randomly. I have no idea who it was. I have no idea what happened to that picture. But, you know, the, like that, that was so special to me, seeing that someone out there had enjoyed that game and drawn one of those characters. Like, that was just incredible to me. It made me feel so good. Made my day, made my week, made yeah. my month. You know, and so, and so now to be able to, you know go online and just see this you know incredible community of people you know with people that are that have 10 times the artistic talent as I do you know with all this all you know with this this fan art you know these fan games you know I mean there are some incredible games out there and 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 I don't want to like I'm scared to mention names or anything because I know that I'm gonna leave out important you know yeah. but but I mean you know like like seeing these 
you know, insane games that Nixon comes up with. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and you know, and and I've always heard nothing but good things about like the storylines of in Pop Goes. Um, and then you know the artistic direction of games like uh, Flumpties. Yeah. You know, and and it, it's like everybody has these these specialties where they're just where they just flourish in the stuff that they make. You know, and and like you go into Game Jolt and just see these pages of pages of all these really cool ones. You know, and I picked out a few, but you know because you know those are probably the more experienced members of the community but you know i don't want to overlook people who are up and up and coming game designers yeah. who decide to make fan games as their first game you know and what an honor that is you know what mm-hmm. an incredible honor that is for someone to want to be a game developer and to have their first couple of games be a five nights at freddy's fan game you know yeah. it's, it's just such an honor and and like i said just the incredible artistic community like on deviant art and anytime i go on reddit just these illustrations that people make and, you know and i've and i've been fortunate enough to uh, snag a couple of those artists to do official artwork for me mm-hmm. um, but you know and, 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 and you know and the memes are great too I've, I've been very fortunate to see myself featured in memes you know not many people get to say that and to see my characters featured in memes so that's always exciting yeah um, but yeah you know and, and just the YouTube community just you know amazing I mean you know you Razbowski the Ryans, you know, yeah. uh, Corey Kenshin, you know, Fusion, there's a, just this whole whole community of great of great YouTubers have just been so supportive over the years. Yeah, I'm just I'm just blessed. I'm just mm-hmm. really blessed. This isn't so much a thank you as just a. I'm just I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to just be surrounded by just such a an incredibly talented community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just been an amazing experience. It really has been. Yeah, and uh, for many years to come, by the way. Scott, like we'll always be well, supportive <clears throat> with the community and you always. Well, I'm I'm gonna try not to let you guys down, but I hope you know. I mean, I, I've I, I don't I don't always I don't always get these things just right, but I hope everybody in the community believes at least that you know. It, it, just like what I said, you know, how I've been trying to write this script. It doesn't mean it's gonna be. It doesn't mean the movie's gonna be perfect, and it doesn't mean that these next few games are gonna be perfect. But I hope everybody at least believes that I'm. That my number one goal is to make sure that I don't let anybody out there down. You know, I know that yeah. a lot of people enjoy this, enjoy these characters, and enjoy these games, and that means the world to me. I'm just going to try to try not to let anybody down. That's always the, at the forefront of all of my thoughts. Just mm-hmm. making sure that I do right by everybody. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Scott. I really do, really, really do appreciate it. You know, it's it's been a long interview, and I really do appreciate the fact that you know you took the time to do this means a lot to me and everybody watching of course well i hope i haven't uh, hope i haven't misspoke anywhere i hope the fan base will forgive me if i overcomplicate at some point the last thing i want to do is start up a see a flame war erupt on reddit right after this interview with everybody taking something that i said so so once uh, let me just make the disclaimer again like no no lore has been hidden in this interview like <laughs> this, this, this is all this is all off the cuff nothing was pre-planned you know and and, and th- this is just some guy you know, talking about his experiences making the game series. So I hope nobody will read, you know, too much into that, you know. But, but yeah, this has, been, this has been a lot of fun, Lewis. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Thank you very much. And, yeah, and that's what the community's like, though. They're trying to think about things too much. Um, so, yeah. Well and, I've, well, and I've done that. That's my fault. You know, that, 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 this is what I have created. You know? <laughs> Curious people. Um, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section about everything. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I really hope that the interview has satisfied you. Um, you know, because there's been a lot of hype for this. So hopefully, like, the questions were good and, you know, everything was perfect for you guys. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.